Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. If we can come to order for the final gallop, we have five talks, short, pithy talks. When I agreed to chair this afternoon, it was under an impression that John might be running about answering the questions with the mic, but unfortunately not scuppered again. Anyhow, he's here to talk to us about locomotive breath excavations of St. Margaret's Rail Depot Turntable Meadowbank. Oh. <laughs> you haven't heard the talk yet. <laughs> oh, I'll pronounce at the back. Is that better? Yeah, we'll get there eventually. Um, thank you very much. This is a joint talk, obviously, with AOC. Uh, um, Stephen's giving a talk in three talks later, so I, I thought I'd ease him into it and give a talk on this project, which is a joint council uh, project. It's the redevelopment of Meadowbank Stadium. Yeah. Um, it's a, as you might know for Ember, the redevelopment of Meadowbank has been on the, on the go for ooh, maybe five or six years ago. Final, uh, initial planning consent. Uh, the first phase is, was the redevelopment of the stadium itself. And if you're a football fan, you might notice not very good uh, conditions for, I think it's Ember City the, and the stand that's not a stand stand. Um, but we moved on. The second phase is really going to be uh, over the next couple of years, <coughs> excuse me very much, uh, on putting a, a new neighbourhood on what was the sports pitches and the site of a velodrome uh, of Mr Hoy's fame. Um, that's going to be a mixed uh, development. But part of that is, I haven't got the full plans, is uh, we identified early on two main sites, one of which is the site of St Margaret's Well, um, <coughs> excuse me, which you can see today um, in Holyrood Park, uh, linked to the first talk today, but I'm not really talking about that today. We're talking about really the ex excavation of uh, the turntable from the St. Mary, St. Margaret's Locomotive Works. Uh, as this was, we knew about the site, so you can see this wonderful uh, OS plan from 1876. Now we knew it was there. Did it survive? Uh, well, it survived really up until the 1960s when the whole site was uh, demolished, uh, but we'll show that later on. So as part of the planning process, I worked very closely with my colleagues in, in the housing development side and collective architects who are actually involved at the early stage but are no longer involved in the second stage of the works. So we went through a whole series of community engagement as part of the planning process. And one of the main ones was actually A, to find it, and B, to preserve it. And this is really a very snapshot of where we're going with it. So we did the evaluation, AOC did the evaluation, and we found bits of it. So we thought, right, let's go for it. Um, basically going back to what it's there for. So this is a, an image of the local engineering works. Very briefly, it's got, it is one of the, it dates to the sort of the golden age of the start of uh, the railway industry in Great Britain. It was built in 1845-46. Um, so right really at the start. It's not the earliest one, but it's one of the earliest ones in Scotland. And it's certainly, I think, the largest one in Scotland. It was one of the main ones on the, not built for the North British Railway Company, uh, from it taken over by LNER to serve as the part of a large locomotive works on the East Coast main line. So as I say, built in 845-6. Well, it had a chequered history throughout. It's almost as soon as it was built, within about 50 years, it was, its initial function was made redundant because, funny enough, trains got bigger. And the, uh, another locomotive works was built on the south side of the railway tracks uh, as part of this wider uh, St. Margaret's Locomotive Works. And then it was rejigged, redeveloped slightly, and in 1921 it was damaged by fire. Uh, the walls were demolished in 1945. Uh, there was a very nice ornamental archway, which you can see up there. Um, it was demolished subsequently in 1953, and the whole thing was taken down as part of the beaching uh, well, we know how good that was, a uh, development in the 1960s, in 1967. So, well, what did it hold? Well, it basically held a um, whole series, I think, up to 14 of these small uh, engines, 
Um, it could, one of which I believe is actually still in operation in Bowness. And you can see the scale of the, the size of the engines that it could actually operate. So I'll just move it on. So here's a picture of AFC in action uh, last year, 1920. Uh, and you can see the top picture there. It's almost a uh, 40, well, God, I've got to get my ages right now, 45 year, 55 years later. The top image, I'm going to get this wrong, up there, is almost taken from the same place. And this is actually the decommissioning of the, uh, the structure in 1967. Unfortunately, they did a very good job in terms of taking all the steel work away, but they did uh, preserve the actual uh, masonry, oh, masonry, sorry, the brick structure. Mm -hmm. I should say, uh, this is not the earliest one. The earliest one, actually, coincidentally, our colleagues down south on HS2 uh, were finding now the earliest such uh, turntable in Curzon Street in Birmingham, which dates to 1837, which is two years earlier than Derby. I know there's railway enthusiasms out there. I'm just taking some notes, so don't shoot me if I get facts wrong on this one. Uh, but my, some of my colleagues are going through the similar ideas of what to actually do with a railway turntable. Um, here is fully excavated. We had a wonderful open day uh, last August. Otherwise, we would have been talking about this last year, but it's too late to be in part of the programme. So you are, and it's in its, all its glory. Oh, that's a wonderful 3D model of it. You can see the inspection pits coming off the side and the radiation where all the, the tracks come in. And what we're going to do, well, this is the latest plans for it. And you can see, unfortunately, we can't expose it because it's quite brick and fragile, uh, but it's going to be protected underneath the new, a new purpose-built park, uh, public square as part of the development. And you can just see that there. And that's the talk. There you are.